This is 2DE. It's a sign software program mainly used to design street name signs, uh, destination signs with arrows, and distance signs with distances and fractions. Um, get a look here into the MUTCD to see what we're talking about. We have uh, street name signs here. And I'm going to skip back a few pages here. Go back to 156. These are your destination and distance signs, distance being down here at the bottom. Uh, we've got a combination here, distance and destination with the arrows in it. Uh, 2DE will also do freeway signs and other signs. Uh, it's been used to create like a yellow street name sign that goes under a uh, signal ahead sign. So there'd be yellow rectangle or plaque going underneath there. Uh, you can use it for regulatory signs and the like, uh, but mainly it was designed to do street name signs and these signs as destination and distance signs. How it works, it's a an AutoCAD program, but it's really an Excel based program. Uh, this is it. This is 2DE. Up here in the upper left hand corner you see it, but above that you'll see it says Microsoft Excel. 2DE is basically a script writer, an AutoCAD script writer that runs inside of Excel and its output is this uh, AutoCAD script. Because it's a script, it works with AutoCAD LT. Uh, there is no programming done inside of AutoCAD and the only things that come out of it are standard AutoCAD objects like lines, polylines, hatches, text, dimensions, and the like. You can see the setup here. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice is that the rows go left to right. This is counterintuitive. You expect them to go from top to bottom, but because of the way it lays out on the data entry sheet, it would be a very, very wide screen and would require a lot of scrolling back and forth wherein it only be a few lines tall, so we've laid it out in the opposite direction that you'd normally think about it. Uh, the other thing you can notice, there are five rows that are set up. Right now I have the top row, which is always on. I'm trying to click on it, and it won't even let me click to turn that off. But if we go here to row two, you can see we can turn it on, or turn it off, whatever you want to want to do. It's set up to assume that you're going to use them in order, starting at the top, then row 2, 3, 4, and 5 if you need it. There is an input highlighter, which becomes handy when you get out here in the middle of the screen. Uh, it'll show you what row you're on. It's easy enough to see that you're on row 3, but you're also putting in the cardinal direction initials at this point. Uh, if I move down the line, you can see it's moving with the cell it's selecting. Uh, it uses both the uh, FHWA 2000 uh, font series or letter series and the Clearview letter series. Their FHWA comes with it. Clearview is an extra. Uh, those will be put in here. And as you can see, we've got C right now, but down here below, we've got the Clearview ones listed as well. So we can just scroll up and down and pick the ones we want. Uh, it also comes with blocks, arrows. As you can see up here, we've got arrows, uh, we've got a shield, and that'd be the U.S. interstate, state shield, national forest. I've got an interstate business loop here. The number of digits, the shields are either a two-digit, so if you have a one-digit, you use a two-digit shield, or a three-digit shield, which is a little wider. There's also a, I believe it showed this, an interstate business loop and on the business loop here we've got loop and spur options that are a little different and you'll notice that it highlighted them yellow because I put in a uh, entry and it's expecting another entry down below as soon as I take that out it's no longer expecting that the arrows are as I said up here some of them can be dynamic so when we get down here to the arrow block type, we can click the fixed, which is most of them, or we can have a dynamic arrow where you may stretch the tail out or do some other sort of thing 
there is data veil validation here you saw that the yellow ones came up expecting an input uh, but if I go ahead and here and try and put a uh, JH it comes and says it's not valid so I'm going to cancel out of that uh, if I go in here and put 5.5 comes up again some of them down here in this area will light up with an explanation of the error if it's uh, not quite as obvious uh, the other things it comes up with and does are the borders and the corners it will do a horizontal line and I'll go back here to these they have horizontal lines in here so it will do those as well and I guess it's time to uh, get into actually doing a demo so we'll go back in here we'll reset the inputs that just clears everything out and the first sign I want to do is the Main Street sign up here this one here and it's a very generic sign but it's what this program was designed to do on the name here you see it's in bold it gives you a place to find it so you're going to use this line pretty much every time main and now I can do the pull down or I could type it in but go down here and find street and you'll notice these are in mixed case uh, per the uh, MUTCD here in the cardinal directions I can pull one of those it's got north south east west northeast northwest southeast southwest so it's got pretty much the eight or directions you're going to need but if I try putting in a uh, lowercase e comes back again looking for an uppercase e so put in an uppercase e goes down here now street signs are a little different than most guide signs so we're going to take the sign size and we're going to round the dimensions down and if we come down here we got a 12 inch wide by excuse me 12 inch high by 36 inches wide sign and both of those are rounding down we're using a six inch letter height so this would be a um, pretty standard intersection one lane each way um, 30 mile an hour and it's East Main Street I'm going to come up here into the upper right hand corner click the run button you'll notice that the uh, hourglass comes up it actually would run much faster than that however we put a delay in there so you could see that it actually did something because what it's done is to create the uh, script and copy it to um, the clipboard now I'm going to go into AutoCAD and as I mentioned it will run in LT this is LT 2014 I'm going to come down to the command line and I'm going to paste and this will paste the script in and it's now running this is an older computer so it's somewhat slow and there's the sign I did that in a couple minutes and that's with giving a description as I was going along uh, let's go into the MUTCD take a little bit more difficult one here we got this US 56 shield on top of it so I'll go back in here to 2DE change that to Winchester went up to the root shield and this is a US two digit highlights 56 Click Run 2DE, go over to AutoCAD LT. Uh, this will also run with regular AutoCAD and with Civil 3D. At that time, I did a Control V to paste it into the command line. And there it is. Now, if you have a city that wants this to be centered because right now it's the same height or bottom aligned if you want this centered aligned or top aligned we can go back into uh, here we go down here to the supplemental alignment and that's for the E for East and the uh, designation for street or whatever and um, let's put them in the middle and you can see that it highlighted it yellow because it's not the default value anymore and I'm going to 
I'll come back here to the command line, paste. And one thing you'll notice, there's uh, some squares on the screen that you saw for a minute. Those are what's called bounding boxes. They're part of the individual lettering dimension. And if you really dig into the standard highways and signs and markings books, you'll find these. Um, and they're simply turned off or frozen right now. They're this layer here. Well, I'll get below it. Sign bounding box layer. Most of the time you won't need that one. You may want to turn on letter dimensions and that will give you each letter individually dimensioned and the sign dimensioned here. Um, and you can see that the letters are dimensioned in between. Well the bounding boxes account for the what's known as the kerning and they show you this but this will give you the October, overall total dimension for each letter. Uh, 2DE places each letter individually, so if you were to change out the fonts, the letter spacing would still be based on the original layout. It would look a little funny, but the dimensions would still be there. Okay, we're going to go into a little bit more difficult sign, and that's this one here. This one has the fish hook arrow in it, um, century is pretty obvious. It's got a horizontal line that does not go all the way across. Uh, it's got 14th Street with another arrow, and then it's got a fourth line down here for roundabout. Now, as I'm counting this, there's top row. This line is the second row. 14th Street with the arrows, the third row, and next roundabout is the fourth row. So let's go back into 2DE, and in this case, I'm going to actually open up a data file. This one took a while to figure out the different sizes that the MUTCD tried to use there, and since I didn't label them, took some trial and error to figure out what it was and make it look similar to what they did. Some of the things they did I would not do the same way, but I'm just trying to mimic what they've done here. So we've got four rows tagged yes. Row two comes down here. And this has been tagged yes for a horizontal line, so you'll notice it blacked out other inputs that are not necessary. There's an arrow here for a fish hook left. There's an arrow here for a straight right. The letters are 12 inch letters, but the last row was shorter. I'll go back and you can see it. It's actually shorter than the letters above it, and all capitalized because it's these two are destinations, proper names, so they are mixed case. The other words are not destinations, so they are uppercase. Okay, the arrow types down here, I'm trying to mimic what they show in there, and they've used a type D. Normally I would not use a type D with a 12 inch letter, but I'm trying to mimic what their example shows. Uh, there's a letter, or excuse me, a horizontal line height if you leave this blank, it will default to the width of the border. Um, otherwise, you can put it in here and expect some value somewhere between zero um, or blank and six inches. And that's for the horizontal line. We have some other inputs here. And these are all standard. If we get down through here, it's rounding up as normal. I've increased the space between the lines to 125% of the line height. And we'll go over and we'll run 2DE. Go into LT. Paste. And again, this is just bringing in the uh, script from 2DE to the command line. It's a little quicker way than trying to save a file and find the file and then run it with the script command. And there we have the sign. Now the only difference is, is this line here. And as I said before, these are all standard AutoCAD objects. That's a block. The C is a letter. Each individual letter is placed individually. 
this line here whoops we got the hatch there's the poly line to show there's a hatch uh, these are standard AutoCAD dimensions and it's telling me what the radii and the border and the offset are here the radii defaults to one eighth of the height if you want to use something different there is a place to change it the border is the same way it defaults to the thickness of these letters but it can be changed and the offset can be changed with a green sign we don't have an offset with a yellow sign we're going to have an offset where the yellow and then the black uh, border and that's usually pretty much the same so I'm going to turn on the uh, letter dimensions here I'm going to go down O snaps already on I'm going to turn on the ortho and we'll put a line in here and we're just going to come from that point down one come here for the other one now I'm going to do a trim just like that one cutting line and that cutting line trim trim delete delete and let's turn off these so it's easier to look at and that's pretty much the same thing as what we have here greens are a little bit different uh, we have one last sign to show you and for this one we're going to go back in and we're going to go back to the previous page which is page 156 I believe yes down here we have this sign this one has arrows destination lines and distances all in one sign so let's go back to 2de again for the same reason that it took a while to figure out what was going on I'm going to just call in a data file which I spent some time figuring out and you saw the data file behind it it's reading in now uh, the files will save as a dot D or dot 2 de file this one has five rows it has Troy is one row the line is two Utica is three line four and Albany is five so we have all of them turned on we have an up arrow the Troy 35 you know, 12 inch letters type D a yes to a horizontal line on two of these again trying to match what's in the example they're using a type D so I'll use a type D um, I've set a horizontal line height to three left most of the variables here it appeared they rounded down on that sign I would have rounded up but they rounded down uh, we can come down here and we can see the size of the sign on the output. This just gives her some general outputs here. Um, you got a border size here of 1.5 inches and the corner radii of 9.75. You know, if you feel like you want to change that to 9 or 10, you can go up here and make the corner radius adjustment right there. We'll run it again. Going to LT, paste it. And there's the sign. Let's go back and take a look at it. Theirs looks a little bit wider. I'm not sure why they went wider because they've got a big space here and a small margin. Um, some people may want to do that and we could do that with playing with some more of the adjustments but this is um, what I would expect to see as a normal output. If I turn on the uh, layers for the uh, 
letter spacing, we have a 12 inch letter with a 12 inch space between Albany and 30 and it's the line that is setting the width of the sign. The variable part here is out here at the left and right edge. The margins are equal and set to 10.9 inches. They're rounded down a little bit. Um, if we round it up, it'd probably go up another three inches per side. So that is it, pretty much. Um, there's a lot of other things in the user's manual that you can read about, a lot of other inputs, but that pretty much will handle most signs that you're going to do. Uh, it will do freeway signs, and I'll have a different video for doing freeway signs, but this will give you the uh, destination, distance, and uh, street name signs, the main three that this program was meant to be used on. If you'll notice on the uh, right side, we have a bunch of comments over here that goes with the inputs. So the left arrow, and it says it's optional. It's, I'm going to move over one so you can see it there. But we can see here which one it goes to. And some of these, the all uppercase, that gives you an idea. Uh, you can read down through there. Uh, this is also in the user's manual. The user's manual has a lot more information on the inputs. Uh, but this is usually what is going to be needed until you get into a very detailed question. This will probably answer most of the questions. Um, I can go in here and we'll try putting a change in Utica to just something that it won't recognize. I run spell check and it comes back here and it even couldn't even figure out what I was trying to type. So We'll just ignore that once. Uh, it's a very helpful. Uh, here's one to reset the inputs. I don't know if I've shown that yet. It just cleared them out. The AutoCAD version here is 2014 to match. For the most part, it doesn't make any difference if you have the same AutoCAD version as what you've typed in there. I could type in 2011. Now that it doesn't like. But if I type in a number that expects, it's fine. It will still run. Um, we've been looking for differences. Haven't found uh, very many right now. Biggest con uh, problem with versioning is in Excel, not in AutoCAD. If you save a 2DE file in a newer version of Excel uh, that has the... Um, XLSX, the four lettered uh, subscript, it will not read in the three letter um, older versions of Excel. Like I said, there is a user's manual. Uh, 2DE sells for $100 with the uh, uh, FHWA fonts, Series 2000 font set. If you want a Clearview font set, that's an extra $50. Additional font sets could be had for $50 each, and they are licensed per computer. So each computer that this is going to run on will need a copy of the font set, and that has to do with if you make an AutoCAD drawing on one computer and then try to open it in another, that other computer is going to have to have the right fonts to match up with what's uh, in the sign or in the drawing because these fonts are unique. They are made to the specifications from FHWA as to the size of the sign, the shape, excuse me, the size of the letter, the shape of the letter. So they must match. If you go, you can give us a call or email us and we'll get you a copy of 2DE with the font sets. $100 per program, $50 for extra font sets. And that concludes the demo.